That's how badly the war is going for Ukraine and for NATO. And of course, with the fall of Solidar, ineluctably comes the fall of Bakhmut, another ancient city riddled with catacombs, underground tunnels in which a fight to the death is this evening occurring. So much so that the head of the Ukrainian military has pleaded with President Zelensky to withdraw, if they can, from the kettle in which they are trapped in Bakhmut for fear of losing thousands of their soldiers on top of the 100,000, according to von der Leyen, or more, according to credible military sources, that they have already lost. And Zelensky has refused his own army chief's demand that the soldiers be withdrawn from the noose in which they currently are poised. And as somebody, I think Colonel McGregor, just pointed out on social media a few minutes ago, Zelensky will be lucky long before the Russians come if the armed forces of Ukraine don't deal with him, if his own generals don't deal with him, because, well, he is cavorting on the stage of the Golden Globes. They are dying in the most unimaginable horror. Don't look at the videos I've looked at. I beg you, don't look at these young Ukrainian men giving their lives for a coke-sniffing, cross-dressing, porn actor, billionaire, cavorting with his film star friends in Los Angeles, in Hollywood, at the Golden Globes. It's all going disastrously wrong. I've just seen the front page of The Economist. I can't bear to open it. But the front page of The Economist still maintains, on this day of all days, that Ukraine can win the war against Russia. On the day that a Russian private military company the Wagner Group defeated NATO in the city of Solidar and is now, right now, mopping up in the catacombs of that city. That ancient city of salt has now fallen not to the Russian armed forces, they're not even fighting there, but to a Russian mercenary group of private military contractors. That's how badly the war is going for Ukraine and for NATO.